This is sort of another rain about town, but we continue nonetheless. Uh, our interdisciplinary study of living creative intelligence and her human heritage. Thank you for coming to this channel. I don't get a lot of business here, and I don't consider myself a businessman, so that works out pretty well. well I want to continue a series on creative intelligence and human heritage. Um, I'm going to link to a short essay in the description box of this video as to the entire series of videos of which this is a part. And today I just want to make a short note on what I think will be the productive pursuit, the productive exploration of the Holy Scriptures, uh, the idea of Holy Scriptures, and other forms of alchemical marketing, that is the intelligent or strategic organization of brain-specific images in sequences over different breadths, either in a, in, a, in a given work of art or in a pattern of work of arts or a pattern of ideas that themselves go beyond the bounds of a particular compartmentalized institute of society or bureaucracy. And they're serving as symbolic anodynes for the, if temporary resolution, perhaps even narcotic resolution, opiate-like resolution of the existential dichotomy of self and its arguably prim primeval substrate, that is, the ground of consciousness or the breadth of existence that goes beyond individual psychology, but provides for a correspondence of mind and body with arguably with that of the rest of the cosmos, from which the self could be said to arise, either from a combination of neurological processes or some other metaphysical source or ground. And in any case, its perspective conflict with its origin and resolution with the source of its inception. And this provides for lots of at least perceptual irony, if not actual uh, contrast between our perception and our environment. To say nothing of the differences in perception among different peeps, peoples over place, time, uh, way of life, culture, religion, science, as the case may be. Human beings or society, the project of society as a whole, um, I think demonstrates a reasonable concern for arbitrating for human bias, which itself, left unchecked, would arbitrate for just about everything and feel completely justified in doing so. Mass psychology absolving people, as it does, of a lot of proportional ethical and uh, rational scrutiny. In fact, deeming itself quite often superior to either whether under the flag of a obvious cult or not. And I think this is part of the benefit and the detriment of just the wide breadth of scope enjoyed by the human creative intelligence and what I call the religious imagination. Human beings are always going to want to pretend as though they have a grasp of more than they do. And that can have enormous immediate and long-lasting psychological and social benefits for people, even though most of what comes to arbitrate for human perception is not explicitly true and, come, and can come to be protected with one's very life from any scrutiny as, or any question of its veracity. Um, this is what we do. In fact, I would say that under these conditions, it would be rare to find people who didn't do that. So I've mentioned the flat earth, but it's not exceptional, but it's an exceptional version um, in a wide, um, dubious history, but also awesome history of the religious imagination, how human beings continually trying to find, trying to resolve their sense of uniqueness with, uh, with their bias, their opinion, fantasy, reality, with some form of exceptionalism wrought from the, however, uh, real or imagined imposing evil of the world around oneself and from which one absolves oneself by virtue of any particular religious creed or conspiracy theory. Oh. 
So those are some notes. Um, just walking, wandering around downtown Parksville here. And I hope that'll be, I think, a suitable introduction to a lot more fruitful discussions on the subject. Once we, at least, I think, tentatively, relieve ourselves of some of the daunting impositions of the religious imagination while preserving, I think, a respect for the value of any story or its capacity to preserve or to communicate or transmit or translate all kinds of it, nothing else, uh, points of inspiration, points of consideration that are far from just abstract, that have to do with human survival. And anyone who thinks that human survival is just biological, I don't think is being honest with themselves. Human beings, much of our culture, human beings are subjected to threats to their social survival on par with that of their biological survival. And as such, there are extraordinary emotional motivations to the religious imagination and is what I call the various scriptural, symbolic, if atavistic anodynes for the existential dichotomy between the self and its prime or, uh, primeval substrate. So I'll put some notes in the description box to uh, a complimentary essay and I hope that you will, at least some people will find that interesting, inspiring. Uh, I don't dismiss the value of religion or science but I think it's time for me and maybe for other people to at least to use whatever excuse there is the flat earth was my excuse a very sophisticated religion very sophisticated uh, death cult that you know uh, whose members are extremely enthusiastic about avoiding reason and evidence uh, as though what they consider reason and evidence is superior to a used to be considered reason and evidence in a world marked as it would might be by conspiracy theories that has the double boon of not only justifying their interest in exposing those conspiracy theories but from absolving uh, the ability, the double ability of absolving them of any better uh, demonstration of some reasonable consideration for human bias and its emotional influences. Thanks for listening.